Now let's look at the second argument we encounter in the main body. A second argument for laptops is that students should have a right to take notes as they choose. We pay good money for our courses and we all have different learning styles, so we should be free to choose the methods that work best for us. Unfortunately, this is a confusing pair of sentences. It sounds like there are some different competing considerations going on at once. That first sentence just begs the question if taken as an argument. If it's not taken as an argument, then it just restates the conclusion. All the action seems to be in the second sentence. If we try to reconstruct this as an argument, the reasoning seems to rely on two premises. One, students pay good money for their classes, and two, students have different learning styles, which are both true, but it's not at all clear how our intended conclusion is supposed to follow from this. As it stands, it's clearly a weak argument. Nor is it obvious how we might charitably repair this argument in a way that reflects the author's intentions, because the intentions just aren't clear. How is the point about paying good money relevant to the conclusion? Are the two premises intended to work together, or are they really intended to be separate points? If you have to be a mind reader to properly reconstruct an argument, that's a bad sign. And this is a case where you have to be a mind reader. So given this, I would advise the author to rethink what they're trying to say here, and especially if they really think that the money issue is relevant. And the different learning styles thing seems like it belongs more naturally with the first argument where you can think of different note-taking methods as part of different learning styles. My advice would be to either rethink this paragraph or get rid of it entirely.